Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Pulp Crazy. I'm Jason Aiken, and this week I will be discussing Who Goes There? Written by John W. Campbell, under the pen name Don A. Stewart. Who Goes There? first appeared in the August 1938 issue of Astounding Science Fiction. This magazine would later be known as Astounding Stories. This is a science fiction story that follows a team of researchers in Antarctica after they discover an alien being frozen in the ice. Sound familiar? If you have ever heard of Howard Hawks' The Thing from Another World or John Carpenter's The Thing, not to mention the recent prequel movie, you already know the basics of this story. All three of these films use Who Goes There as the source material. I have yet to see the 2011 prequel of The Thing, but John Carpenter's 1982 version is one of my favorite movies. My love for his version of The Thing predates my interest in pulp literature, even. It was only recently that I discovered The Thing was based off of a pulp story. Once I learned that, I knew I had to read this. This was the first true science fiction pulp story I've read. I have read a lot of weird tales and other supernatural stories, but this is the first story that had a focus on science rather than the supernatural. For the most part, the main characters in this story are scientists. Other characters include a pilot, a cook, a dog handler, and the commander of the expedition. The group finds an alien ship they believe to have been frozen in the ice for 20 million years. They are able to retrieve the ship's pilot, but accidentally blow up the ship with thermite charges. They bring the frozen specimen back to base where they intend to study it. Needless to say, things don't go according to plan. The alien has the ability to shapeshift and read minds, making it a gifted chameleon, able to blend in with the group seamlessly. Not only that, it has the ability to replicate, and it can survive if just one drop of blood is left over. As the group discovers they are being infected, and some of their comrades are no longer themselves, Paranoia ensues. It is up to a giant, bronze-skinned meteorologist named MacReady to take command of the expedition and come up with a solution. MacReady is billed as a meteorologist, but it is mentioned he was going for a PhD at one point and has a pretty substantial knowledge of the sciences. This, along with his physical appearance, has led many people to speculate he is Doc Savage in disguise. So if you are a fan of Doc Savage, that kind of gives you another reason to check out this story. The story is similar to the John Carpenter movie. I can't comment on the Howard Hawks or the recent prequel version, as I haven't seen either. But from what I've seen, the story is different enough from the John Carpenter movie to make this worth reading. The characters are slightly different. There are 17 characters named in the story, and there are 37 members of the expedition altogether. And let's face it, Kurt Russell is awesome, but he's not what you would call a bronze-skinned giant. The time periods are also different. The story takes place in the 1930s, while the film takes place in the 1980s. The skeleton of the story remains the same in both. Campbell wrote a very compelling tale here, 
so it makes sense Carpenter kept what he could intact while adding his own touch as a cinema master. A few other differences to point out. Carpenter did not give the creature a true form like Campbell did. You could also call it a base form or a original form. Also, this is not so much of a horror story as the Carpenter film is. This is a science fiction story with some horror elements, while I would say the converse is true for the film. I don't know a good deal about the author, John W. Campbell, but I know he went on to become the editor of this magazine later on. While he was the editor, he helped usher in the golden age of science fiction. I have included links to a few web pages that go into greater detail about him. I have also included a link to a podcast I recorded that goes into greater detail about him, especially during his tenure as editor. It is from Pulpfest 2012, where Ed Hulse and Garen Roberts discuss him and his tenure as editor of Astounding Stories. Rick Croxton and Art Sippo were kind enough to host it on the Book Cave podcast. I will also link to the Pulp Magazine's project pages where you can download the August 1938 issue of Astounding Science Fiction and read this story on the website via Flipbook or download the PDF. I read it in PDF format and enjoyed reading it that way. It was cool to read it in the classic pulp format, complete with the original illustrations. That's it for this week. Next week I'll be heading to Columbus, Ohio for Pulp Fest 2013. Pulp Fest runs July 25th through July 28th. It's always a lot of fun. This is my third year going, and I have enjoyed every year. They have a great dealer room and top-notch programming. I'll be sure to give a report after I get back. I'll throw up a link in the show notes about Pulp Fest in case you need more information. Pulp Crazy is located at pulpcrazy.com. I'm at pulpcrazy on Twitter and facebook.com slash pulpcrazy. You can email me at pulpcrazy at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. Until next time.